Hello guys, today I'm going to be showing you a bit about compositing on how to track the camera movement from your footage so that you can insert any objects such as text, images, 3D objects or anything inside your video. In this example, I insert a simple animation of the screenshot of my Instagram into a video of myself having a coffee. So we're going to be using the track camera inside After Effects to do this. Let's get started. So now, I have this shot of myself taking a photo of my coffee and trying to share it on my Instagram. It's just a normal, unprofessional shot, very shaky, taken just by my smartphone. So I drag the video file to After Effects and once the file is in the project window, I'm going to drag the file here to create a new composition. Now we have created a new composition. The very first thing I'm going to do is to click on the track camera. If you can't find the tracker window here, then you should go to window and make sure the tracker is checked here. Now I turn it off and on again and it should be here. So I'm going to click on the track camera. After Effects will take some time to analyze the footage. And once it's done, you will see all these circles when you move your mouse around the composition. All these are solids created in 3D space based on the track points here. The trick here now is to choose the right solid as a guideline on where you want to place your object inside this 3D space. For example, let's choose this solid here on this wall. So I'm going to right click on it and choose create solid and camera. So now you see we have a solid here on the composition and a 3D tracker camera. Now when I scrub through the timeline here, this solid layer is fixed right here on the 3D space. I need something in front of me. So let's go back to the 3D camera tracker here. And let's choose a solid from something like a cup here. So I'll choose this one and create solid. Now when I scrub through the timeline again, notice that the new solid layer is fixed on the cup, which is in front of me. And that's a perfect reference point. So I delete the first solid layer leaving only the one that is fixed on the cup. Then I'm going to select the layer, press P for position and start adjusting the position of the solid layer by moving it using the three handles X, Y and Z. Then I'm going to press R for rotation and adjust the rotation by the orientation until I get something right. I'm going to scrub the timeline, adjust the rotation again and I think that's okay. Now, I have this image that I print screen from my Instagram and I'm going to place this image in the 3D space on the composition. So I'm going to drag this image to After Effects and drag it here to create a new composition. I think I'll rename this composition as Screen 1. Now, this is entirely up to you guys but I'm going to do some simple animation on this composition. First, I'm going to resize this slightly smaller, go to New Layer new shape layer. Then I'm going to go to the rectangle tool, make sure the fill is none, stroke to white, leave the pixel at 12. Then I'm going to draw a boundary outside this image, something like this. Then I go to layer, layer styles, outer glow. Go to the property, change the glow color to blue, opacity to 100, and increase the size to somewhere around 40. Then I'm going to duplicate this, Control D, resize it bigger. I think I'm going to do a quick blinking animation on this. So I'm going to select both of them, press T for opacity, create a keyframe at 100, go to the next frame, opacity to 0, next frame 100 again, next frame 0, and next frame 100. So now, when I play the animation, we have a blinking effect here. I don't want both to start at the same time. So I'm going to move the first layer a few frames to the right. Now, when I play the animation, they both blink at different time. Perfect. Then I'm going to move the image a few frames to the right and I'm going to animate the scale. So select the image layer, press S for scale, create a keyframe, go to the starting point and I'm going to resize it much smaller, maybe somewhere to 10. So I'm going to type 10 here. So now, when I play the animation, we have this simple animation revealing the image. 
I think I'm going to make the image bling as well. So I go to effect, color correction, hue and saturation, keyframe the channel range. Go to the next frame, change the likeness to 60. Next frame, back to 0. Next frame, 60 again. Next frame, 0. Now, when we play the animation, the image blinks as well. I think I'm going to lower down the likeness from 60 to maybe 40. So I'm going to change to 40 here. Let's play the animation. Looks better now. Okay, let's go back to the main composition. Now what I'm going to do is to replace this purple solid layer with the animation that we just worked on on screen 1 composition. So I'm going to drag the screen 1 composition into this main composition. Now, we have this animation on the main composition. I'm going to change this layer into 3D by clicking here. And now, automatically we have this animation inside the 3D space. Now, when I scrub the timeline, this animation is too close to the camera. I want it to be in the exact same position with the purple solid layer. So what I can do is select the solid layer, press P for position. Select the position and copy it by pressing Ctrl C or Apple C. Select the animation layer and paste it by pressing Ctrl V or Apple V. Now, the animation is sitting right at the same position of the solid layer. I'm gonna go back to the solid layer again. Press R for rotation. I'm gonna copy the orientation of this solid layer and paste it on screen 1 layer. Now, this layer has the exact position and orientation of the solid layer. I'm going to hide the solid layer now since we don't need it anymore. I think I want the animation to appear right after I start typing something on my phone. So I'm going to drag the screen 1 composition to somewhere around 2.5 seconds. Now, when I start typing something, the animation starts. And this is what I want. Let's see the whole thing. Okay, I'm going to make the Instagram picture bigger. So I press S for scale resize it bigger to maybe 170. Let's see the animation again. I think the size is good. Next, I'm going to change the blending mode to maybe screen and you get something like this, like a see-through. I'm going to make it stronger so I duplicate this layer, Ctrl D or Command D and change the blending mode to overlay for this one. Maybe a bit too strong so I'm going to change the opacity down to around 60%. Gonna do the same for the other layer as well. Maybe to same 60%. That's great. I'll add a blue glow on the layer. So I go to layer, layer styles, outer glow. Color to blue, opacity to 100. Size all the way to maybe 70. I think I want the other layer to have the same effect. So I can just copy this and paste the outer glow effect on this layer. All right, as you can see now, we can do so many things since we are already on the 3D space and you can put as many elements as you want inside the scene. So I'm just going to do a quick demonstration. In this case, I will just copy the current layer and I can rotate it and put it in a different position in the 3D space. I can also put different objects like a text layer and change this layer into 3D. I can move it around the 3D space as well. And lastly, you can do a quick color correction. In this case, I will just do a quick one by using photo filter. Play around with the settings and, and maybe color balance. Play around with the settings. Okay, I don't want all three images to appear at the same time. So I will just move some of them a few frames ahead like this. And let's see the animation. I think this works well. So in this example, I did two different animation in two different composition and brought them into the main composition. I also created a mask around myself and animate the brightness around myself to simulate the light reflection coming from the screen. So that's about it. It's actually quite simple and I hope you guys learned something from watching this. If you like this, please subscribe to my channel as I plan to do more tutorials like this in the future. That's all for now and peace be on you.